Welcome back. This is Matt from Jackers Brew and Co. Today's special guest is Thomas from Craft Brew Hero, guys. How we doing? Hell yeah. This has been a long time coming. Uh, we got together and brewed a special collaboration beer. Um, after a few discussions on what to brew, we decided to kind of head towards the holiday side of uh, things. It was in the middle of December. Uh, so this uh, beer has been in the bottles for probably about two, three months now. Uh, yeah, it's been waiting for us. It has been, yeah. You know, I've, I've been fortunate enough to have uh, one or two on the side just to make sure that everything was uh, pretty decent before we got together and got this uh, film going for, for you guys. And I haven't had breakfast yet, so I'm ready for a nice stout to get my day kicked off. That's the only way to do it. That's the only way to do it, guys. It ain't day drinking unless you start early. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for for the actual recipe and mash temperatures and, and all that, check out the description uh, notes. Everything will be there. Uh, the most important thing though in this beer, I kind of feel like, is all the um, boil additions and all the secondary uh, additions in the fermenter. That's where we added uh, some of the spices and, and all that. That's where we really had some fun. Uh, we got some, some bourbon and some wood chips, and we actually just had a little bit of uh, playtime here and got to burn them. And Are you gonna show footage of that in this film? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So while we were mashing in, uh, we toasted all those, all those wood chips. Mm. Uh, so that way, while it was fermenting for uh, two weeks, we soaked those wood chips in the bourbon, and as you can see the difference, this is the uh, liquid left out of the wood chipped soaked stuff, and then you wanna show the, the other bottle? Yeah. This is what we started with. You can tell the, the color really changed dramatically. Got a lot darker, it took in those caramel notes from the, you know, from the burning of the wood and everything like that, so we're excited to see how that affected the flavor profile of the stout. Yeah, we were trying to mimic kind of like the the uh, barrel aged yeah. uh, effect, you know, pulling those vanillins and, and, and all that. Ah, the villains, all the villains. <laughs> the vanilla lens. So uh, for the bowl additions, uh, we started with uh, one pound of brown sugar at 60 minutes. Uh, then one ounce of the good old Cascade at 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty much in every beer. Then we used uh, three quarters of an ounce of Cluster um, at 30 minutes. Threw in a Warflock tablet at 15 minutes to help clarify the beer. Even though we have a lot going on, that good clean beers is the shot of every brew that I think you should, you should go for. Yeah, everyone likes to drink with their eyes first. So we used uh, one pound of uh, lactose, which was the, the first time I'd ever used lactose in a beer. Same here. And this was your first stout to brew, yep, right? Yep, first ever stout. Yeah. First stout. And then first first addition of wood chips too to a beer, correct? Yeah, I've never done this many things, you know, post fermentation in, in the secondary fermenter. This is my first kind of run. No, I normally just dry hop, so adding all this stuff in was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. To kind of just round everything out, we used a half a teaspoon of uh, yeast nutrients at the uh, last 10 minutes of the boil to make sure those yeast uh, got off to a good start and kind of could keep trucking it along, get this thing fermented out for keep us. Keep them happy, right? You gotta keep your yeast happy. Absolutely. And then uh, to round off the last boil addition, we used one ounce of the good old East Kent Goldings. That's a pretty classic. Uh, yeah, OGs. Yep. You know, after fermentation was complete, after uh, two weeks, we used uh, the, the Lutra strain, the Quike mm. uh, strain to ferment this out. And uh, we went ahead and we used in, we, we put in one quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. And then we took three ounces of those uh, wood chips that were, were in there. I think I started off with three ounces of, of wood chips in there, so. And just so they know, you just used the wood chips, correct? Yes. You did not throw any of the liquid in. Correct, yeah. Just so you guys know. Yeah, just I just like basically pulled the wood chips out, kind of patted them dry just a little bit, and then I put them in a, uh, like a, a, Mesh bag? Yeah, mesh bag right. uh, for, for additions there, so that way, 
I could sink them. Uh, I used uh, those like aquarium glass uh, oh, pebbles, pebbles yeah. to, to help sink everything to the bottom so that way nothing would stay on the top and kind of mold and infect the beer really. And at this point, we're not too worried about uh, <clears throat> catching a infection because the beer is already fermented, correct? And the chips have been sitting in 40% uh, alcohol, so they're pretty much sterile. Yes, yes, they should they should be. I mean, I guess there's always the chance that you could catch an infection, especially with the, the nutmeg, and then we used the wood chips. Uh, we used one cinnamon stick and then one vanilla bean. So with everything that's going into this thing, theoretically, yes, you could you could catch an infection on something, but I don't think that pretty like rare though. Just because we did every because we added all the uh, the cinnamon and nutmeg, we did that in the boil, right? No, no, we did oh, we that. Didn't. We did that all in secondary. Oh, we did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, put that in the baggie and then and then so sunk put, it to the okay. bottom. I wasn't there for that part. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just you know assuming, which we all know what that means when you assume things. So. <laughs> so let's uh let's crack some of these open and kind of right. kind of take a uh, a good go at it. You guys see our awesome labeling system? It's gonna be the new fashion one day. Blue tape. Patent pending. Patent pending. Had a good little hiss there. That was good. We ooh, look at that. I think uh, the head could have been a little bit more frothy. Could have used a little bit. How much? Uh, do you know how much uh, priming sugar you put in here? I think it was uh, 3.2 uh, ounces. Okay. And that was for five gallons, or yes, okay. yes, yeah. This this made a whole five gallon batch of, of beer. So looking at the color, I mean that's pretty dark. So you can definitely tell it should look like a stout because it does. Um, I'm catching right off the bat some vanilla and some caramel notes from the wood chips soaking in the whiskey. What are, what are you catching? I kind of got this little bit of earthy smell. Which a little I, earthy? Yeah, which I would assume is from the, the wood chips and yeah. the vanilla bean probably. Like just all the spices kind of combined. I would call that medium high body, huh? Yeah, I was gonna say medium. It, it's very smooth. Yeah. Uh, very smooth. Especially, especially considering the the alcohol that got added to it with um, with the wood chips. This thing came out to be right about seven ABV. It was uh, six point nine six ABV. So we round up here on this channel. Just for those of you who don't. For everybody, you should always round up. <laughs> always round up, though. Three or um, more, round up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can definitely taste bourbon qualities to it. We might need to change what we call this, like a bourbon stout, because, I mean, this... Okay, so, first off, with the inspiration of the holidays and stuff, and us saying, okay, let's make an eggnog stout. Mm -hmm. Did we hit the mark, first and foremost? So, I would say no. My first inclination would be to say no. Um, Why do you say no? Even though we added lactose, um, I would think when you think eggnog, you think more creamy and more thick. I think we could definitely achieve a little bit more body to the beer and a little bit of a creamier finish. Um, so we might have to go back to the drawing board. However, this does remind me of a nostalgic uh, kind of winter um, like seasonal feel, mm -hmm. right? So I think we hit the mark for being in the correct uh, part of, you know, time of year. Mm -hmm. Because this definitely would taste great by the fireplace or a bonfire, you know, having a bunch of friends over. 
It's a, it's a delightful beer. It tastes great. Like I said, it has great bourbon notes and hits to it. I just think that what we were going for, we didn't quite hit, but if we were going for a, a bourbon stout, we would have hit the mark almost dead on, in my opinion. I, I, I do agree to some, some aspects. I, I do feel like as far as like the eggnog stout, like what we originally were planning out the gate, I feel like it doesn't hit the mark of that. I think though that you can taste the inspiration there of, oh, yeah. of, of when you drink it. Excuse me. I do think though that we just had too much going on there to, to compete with the lactose part of it. Because um, I don't pick up necessarily on the creaminess, right? But I do have that like th thicker mouthfeel, which is why I say it's kind of like medium to higher body, mm -hmm. not quite high body, but but kind of transitioning that way, right? Uh, I do think that that this is kind of like a, a baby Russian Imperial barrel yeah. style, it's, like old Rasputin. You don't you don't you don't get that that that. Uh, thick syrupiness that you catch out of some of those those things. I think that this is a good kind of, like you said, sitting by the campfire or the fireplace and kind of just, just having a nice yeah. stout that's not 14, 15% Russian Imperial stout. Right, we don't have to serve it in a snifter. You know, we yeah. can you can serve it in a good pint glass. And uh, drink a, a pint of it by yourself and not get tore up. Right, and still be <laughs> able to function and be a decent adult. Um, yeah. Now, I think I would definitely keep this the way it is and then go back and figure out how we could actually create a creamier, more, you know, a thicker I think this. Stout. I think this unlocks a couple ideas. Yeah. I, I, I love this beer. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say though that I, I would say that that off of this, and this is based on my like house stout recipe that I used to play around with different yeast and and things like that. So I think that this though helps unlock. Like you could go a couple different ways with this. You right. know, you could you could probably bump it up to a Russian Imperial stout and just kind of increase all the percentages and things like that to mimic something like that. I think that you could take this base recipe and maybe drop some of the wood chips in the spice additions and see if it comes out in that like cream stout, uh, sweet stout kind mm -hmm. of area. You might have to tone down the hops to right. counteract some of that. No, I agree. Uh, what temperatures did we ferment at? Room temperature. Uh, right. uh, my initial plan was that I was going to under pitch uh, uh, the quike like I normally do here. Um, but I decided to just basically ferment at room temperature and I used the whole bag. Uh, so that way I wouldn't really push that yeast and stress it out to throw off some, um, some esters that would get lost in, in the muddle here. You know, there, there's a lot going on here. There is. I know the reason why I'm asking is that I know at warmer temperatures you can pick up on you know, more fruitier esters. Yeah. And I'm definitely, now that the beer has had time to kind of soak into my palate, I do pick up on some fruitier esters, which I think we could dull out if we had maybe some better fermentation control. What do you think? Yeah, we could probably have fermented it a little lower. Uh, honestly though, I would have changed the yeast that that was yeah. gonna be be the the the, the thing. Uh, like You're I said- You're just a fan of bike yeast. I am, and the reason it. The, the, it. the reason why is it's easier for us Texas boys to ferment warm than it is for us to, to ferment cool. You're I don't wrong. <laughs> it's cheaper too, right. <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, but but really, like realistically, like I I think that you could probably play with a couple different yeast strains and totally change the flavor to some extent. Yeah. Um, here, depending on which way you wanted to go. I don't think that we chose a bad yeast. No, I think it's quite delightful, in my opinion. I don't. I don't really pick up on any yeast character personally. I think, oh, you don't. I think as it warms up, I think it's a little bit more to do with that 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 bourbon aspect is what where it's pulling from. All the all the notes that we picked up from from the wood chips. Mm. 
regardless of uh, everything going on here, it's everything works and it came together. I mean, I definitely, I would be proud to present this, wouldn't you, to someone else? Absolutely. And have yeah. them try it out. I think uh, I would definitely, if I was going to a local brewery and pick this beer up, I would definitely go back in for another. Um, I could I could see drinking two or three of these. Yeah. Like like without hesitation, back to back. Yeah. You know? And because it's seven percent, he said it's right around seven percent. This this will age pretty well, right? We don't have to worry about. I think I think it'll age uh, a decent amount. It's kind uh, of on the lower end of the spectrum for aging, right? But yeah, I think so. But it still could do well. So the interesting second part of this we had talked about was maybe let a few of these bottles run a year yeah. and see how different it tastes. And so that'd be kind of cool to come back and revisit this. Uh, Will you be like bottle lagering it in the in the cooler, or are you gonna let it sit out? No, no. So all my storage for bottle conditioned beer is at room temperature. At room temp. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I normally let my beers uh, sit in bottle condition around seventy degrees because I have two fermentation chambers back home, and so. What, what, one of them is normally free, and so I'll just put my bottles in and set the uh, Inkbird uh, temperature controller at 70 degrees and just kind of let it ride. Just like Matt said, we have so many different swings and temps here, and it's generally on the warmer side in Texas, so we have to try to find a stable environment for that temperature, especially in the initial stages, because it's pretty important. I keep my room temp pretty much at 72 degrees. 72? Right yeah. Yeah. So, and that's why I feel Feel okay. okay with it, like yeah. like like if I if room temp around here was 80 degrees, I would I would probably want to like cellar it or something like that, like find some way to right. kind of have it a little cooler atmosphere. Sweet. Now I'm I'm in. Are you gonna let me uh, go home with a couple of these bottles? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah no. Yeah. yeah. yeah no. I'm part of this about. batch is is yours. Mm. So what's coming up next? Uh, what's our next beer gonna be? Um, what do you want to do? Well, we talked about a few few things. Uh, we talked about fire ant hill. <laughs> we got tons of fire ants down here in Texas, let me tell you that. One giant mound of fire ants. <laughs> now, do you really want to throw fire ants in the beer? The way that I put it, and when I presented this idea, you were like, what the hell are you even talking about? I was shocked. And I said, I said it's just open to interpretation. It's open to, yeah, obviously. <laughs> Just take the <laughs> essence of fire ants, put it in a beer, and see what happens. So it sounds like we're throwing fire ants in there. <laughs> if if that's what you decide, I I already have an idea of what I'm gonna do. I've been I've been thinking about this for a hot minute, so I I have a plan. Yeah, I know you kind of wing it. I wing it too, but I'm I'm not as wingful as you. So I know personally, I'm gonna be working on uh, doing just like a base IPA, like an American IPA. Hey, hey, you can't, you can't let me know what you're doing with the what the fire ant tail. Oh no, this is not fire. Oh ant okay, no, yeah, no, no. yeah, you keep that to yourself, okay? No, no, no yeah, I'm not gonna a... give you my trade secrets, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> I make you work for it a little I, more. I got more up my sleeve than you do. He does. He got bigger sleeves than me. Um. Yeah, so what I would like to see us do, well, first of all, I want to congratulate uh, Mr. Matt Jaggers over here. He is going to be, one of his beers will be, what, on tap and in and bottled at a local brewery? Yeah, so uh, the, the Hazy IPA uh, yeah. competition that uh, Jonathan Reasoner and I uh, got together with in our homebrew club, Bay Area um, Masternauts. Bay Area Masternauts. We 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 won uh, the competition that was held at Backfish, and uh, it's on tap right now as of yesterday. Uh, I'm going up there today to okay. pick some up. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we can do a taste test of that together. That would be great. Yeah, we should do that in like the next week or two. It's, it's a fine time. It's really hazy, dude. Is it? Oh yeah. But uh, so they're selling your beer. Yes. So it's are on you tap. getting any of the proceeds? No. I got I, I got a nice gift card from them, and to use I at their spot. <laughs> I cashed it in, and I got a lot of beer for it. Oh, okay, um, but I, I got okay. to go brew on their on their deal. And oh, stuff you think like you got that. to brew on the big system? So. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. How many barrels? How many barrels is it? I don't know. It's huge. Big. It, it's intimidating. Yeah, as a homebrewer to something like that, it's 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 pretty big. 
But uh, but no, uh, so it's on tap there. It'll be in cans and it's gonna hit grocery stores and uh, Total Wine. Are you serious? Yeah. That is, honestly, I, you must be really proud of that. That's... I am, uh, uh, you know, we all work together too on the label. I, so I got to put some input into that label and that label is badass. Yeah, I mean, do you want to show a picture of it here in the video? Uh, I'll see if I can incorporate that. Okay. But, uh... It's super cool. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try to go, uh, get my hands on some cans. Uh, you think it's gonna sell out fast? I mean, if it's gonna be in grocery stores... It's a hazy. You know? It hits, it hits that... It hits that threshold that mm. everybody's interested. IPA and hazy. IPA is wicked just in. label. I think that label says yeah, that by me. That label's great. Man, that must be cool. So wow, I can't wait to can't wait to try some. So uh yeah, no, uh I'm looking forward to the fire ant ale with between you and I. I think uh taste tasting and the hazy IPA would be pretty cool. Yeah, I would definitely like to uh, to pick your brain on the you know what you did and, and everything like that because I love IPAs. That's kind of where I want to focus in on you know my home brewing uh, expertise. And so I'll be brewing a batch, a ten gallon batch, on my system soon. So watch out for that video. But um, but yeah, anything else you want to share with our awesome guests and our and our supporters before? before we head out here? Not that I can think of. I think we hit all the marks on this beer. I don't think that there's really anything else we can talk about and seeing as how I'm... Yeah, I need to catch up here. <laughs> um, but uh, thanks for dropping by, coming by, checking us out. Uh, come and check out Thomas's uh, channel. That's uh, Craft Brew Hero. Uh, we do a bunch of how-tos. We do uh, beer reviews as well. And I kind of show you guys my beer journey uh, different breweries. I have a great trip in Denver that I went to. Uh, you got to see some great breweries in Denver. So uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification on both our channels. And we'll guys, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers. So, I've never shot with this many cameras before. Yeah, kind of. Oh shit! I need to turn that light. There you go. All the lights, huh? Yeah. Dude. This is what it feels like to be in the big leagues, huh? Sure. You're right. <laughs> Alright. You ready? Yeah. That good clean beers is the shot of every brew that I think you should you should go for. Yeah, everyone likes to drink with their eyes first. Just like I like to drink my women first, if you know what I mean. That's getting cut out of my video. <laughs> uh, All right, Thomas, chug, chug. I mean, pour, pour. <laughs>